If you ask people and love how they met their partner, you will be surprised at how diverse and strange some meetings can be. People have different love stories, but it doesn't matter how love comes, as long as we find it with the right person. Let's see how Katie, a shy accountant, an anonymous columnist, will find love. I promise you, you won't expect this. In the opening scene of Dear Viola, we see two men who are long-time friends, working on a boat. Some ladies pass by. One of the friends, Clay, sees them and calls the attention of his friend, Russ, but he is so engrossed in the fishing line that he doesn't look up. It appears Russ is not interested in any lady, but we'll get to know why soon enough. In the next scene, we see the Bellport Herald office. Peggy, a nosy employee, is interested in knowing why Earl, their boss, is pacing around in his office with Helen, an employee just sitting down quietly. Ironically, she claims she's not the one to be in other people's business, but it's obvious Peggy is the one interested in everyone's office gossip. She boldly tells Brian and Katie that she heard that Helen wants to go live with her son in Minnesota, which means she's retiring. On hearing this, Katie is immediately concerned about who will write their Dear Viola column in the paper when Helen is gone. While they're still gossiping, Earl opens his office door, and he and Helen come out. Helen just looks at all of them and then walks away. When she leaves, Earl informs them that Helen is leaving them, and unfortunately her column of Dear Viola won't continue, because no one can write like Helen does. Earl has to look for the best way to relay Helen's retirement to their readers, and he warns Peggy and Brian not to tell anyone about their situation, or they'll be fired. They all know that from the advice Helen gives to people on her column, it helps a lot, and the whole town may go ballistic now that her column won't be published. Everyone that buys the newspaper goes first to Helen's column. Although people like Clay discourage others like Russ from reading it, he thinks it's just a stupid column. Back at the office, Earl comes back and finds a letter addressed to Dear Viola, and a response to the letter on his desk. He reads it and is impressed. Earl tries to find out who wrote it. Peggy suggests that it may be Helen's swan song, but Earl tells them that the writing isn't like Helen's. To find the real writer, Earl tells them that whoever wrote it will get a salary raise and a promotion. Katie gets back home and meets Rennie in the kitchen. Rennie was Katie's mom's housekeeper before her demise, and since Rennie is now advanced in age, Katie is taking care of her. Well, the irony of life. Rennie isn't too strong health-wise, and Katie doesn't want her doing strenuous work in the house, so she takes over the cooking and gives Rennie a copy of the paper to read. Rennie looks forward to reading Helen's volume. Even though Earl warned them, Katie seeing the excitement on Rennie's face, reveals that Helen is retiring, which means her column will be stopped. Rennie is sad about this because, without Helen's column, people like her in the town may go crazy. The doorbell rings, and when Rennie opens the door, it's Earl. He is there to talk business with Katie. Earl cuts to the chase and tells Katie that he fixed the faulty cameras in the office. So, after checking them, he saw that she was the one that secretly dropped the letters on his desk. He wants to know why she didn't come forward to say she's the one. Katie reveals that she has always wanted to be a writer, but then her life just took a sudden turn. She didn't come forward because she knows writing is hard, and she doesn't think she can write another one. Earl encourages her and commends her for being insightful and even funny in her write-up. Earl offers Katie the job, and she accepts, but on two conditions, she still keeps her job as a bookkeeper, and she remains anonymous. After a few seconds of thinking, Earl agrees to her conditions, and then he leaves. Rennie, who has been eavesdropping the whole time, comes out and is very excited for Katie and her new job. Before the excitement gets too much, Katie quickly reminds Rennie that it's a secret, so she can't tell anyone. Later in the night, Katie settles down to read the letters, and after that, she writes the replies. However, there is a letter that stands out. It is titled Lost Love, and it's from a man who lost his wife, and ever since, he lost faith in God and humanity. The only thing that keeps him going is his daughter. Katie advises him not to lose faith, and not to punish his daughter for his lost love. She advises him not to neglect every other thing in his grief. She believes his late wife would want him to stop whining and be a father to his daughter. At work, Brian is going on and on to Peggy about the new Viola, but Peggy doesn't sound interested. Katie's reply to lost love has shown that the new Viola is on fire. In the next scene, Russ is reading the Viola column in the paper when his daughter, Meredith, comes back from school. As soon as Meredith drops her backpack, she reveals her teachers were sneak reading the paper during science class. Lost love is now the talk of the town, and everyone wants to know who the person is. Cindy and one of her customers are having a serious conversation about lost love. Brian makes a statement and mistakenly mentions the new Viola. Cindy is surprised that a new Viola is writing the column, and at once, Brian realizes what he just said. He tries to cover up, saying that he meant her new personality that lost love brought out. Meanwhile, Katie also works as a part-time accountant at Cindy's. After doing Brian's hair, Cindy meets Katie at her desk and informs her that she's so keen to know the new Viola, even though every other person is keen on knowing who lost love is. Katie puts on a show of not being interested in what she is saying and concluding her job. Cindy invites Katie to the set of rope loft, because she notices that Katie doesn't like to socialize. Katie declines and heads home. Now, we get to ascertain that lost love is Russ. He's seen writing another anonymous letter to Viola, expressing his dislike for the way she replied to his last letter. She replies to him still. 
It's like this session between Lost Love and Viola had become more like an interactive one with an exchange of banter. Russ writes back again. He expresses his dislike for the way she tagged him as a coward while sitting behind her computer, when she hasn't experienced his grief. He questions if she even has a great life, or any life at all. He suggests she stops being anonymous, and he will take the risk she suggested of leaving his grief behind. Russ has to lie to his daughter that he is writing to Grandma, when she asks him who he is writing to. Katie is in the kitchen making cupcakes, and Rennie comes in with the newspaper in her hand. An excited Rennie is eager to know if she will take up the challenge from Lost Love. Katie, quite pissed that Rennie indirectly called her a coward, goes up and starts to reply to the Lost Love's letter. She does not take up his challenge. She just promises not to give up on him till he is a better version of himself. At the office, Earl hands Katie some supposed spreadsheets she wanted. But in the file, it's letters addressed to Viola. Immediately Earl leaves, and Peggy as usual, cries. Katie goes to read the letters in the restroom. While Katie is still reading, Peggy comes in. On hearing Peggy's voice, Katie immediately pretends to flush the toilet and comes out. Katie behaves nervously, even as she's washing her hands, and the very nosy Peggy at once notices she's up to something. Even during the Sunday worship in church, people are busy talking about lost love and who he may be. After the church service, Meredith runs to the dessert tower where Katie is standing and takes a cupcake. Her dad Russ follows her, telling her to slow down. Russ and Katie get talking, and surprisingly, they know each other. When Russ turns to leave, Katie nervously hands him a cupcake. Later, Katie writes to Lost Love again, advising him not to give up on love, even though she may not be an expert on the topic. In the next scene, Katie is at the bank. Craig, a member of her church, meets her and they have a short awkward conversation. Russ is busy as usual reading Viola's reply. Clay is concerned with the way Russ has been gloomy, and tells him that they'll go together to the rope loft, get drunk and flirt with some girls, so that Russ can have fun and forget about his loss. Russ agrees, but Clay is shocked at the way Russ just agreed, because he avoids socializing. It seems he wants to listen to the advice from the paper column. Later in the night, Russ and Clay are at the bar, and a woman, Alexis, is coming towards Russ, but Russ doesn't think he's her type. Alexis wants to dance with him, but Russ says he doesn't dance. She thinks since he doesn't dance, then at least he could take her out for dinner. So she suggests a day, and Russ agrees. The next morning, Katie meets Brian at the bank, and then Russ comes in and joins the queue. Katie notices Russ's face isn't so bright. Brian mentions hearing Russ was painting the town red last night. Russ is not happy that their town is small, and everyone must know what everyone else does. However, Katie thinks it's nice to look out for each other. It's Friday night already, and Russ is out for dinner with Alexis. After dinner, Alexis is disappointed that he doesn't like her, and she stands up to leave. She makes sure she tells Russ that he has good looks, but he doesn't have a good game. In the next scene, Katie is worried after Rennie mistakenly breaks some plates. She wants to call 911 for an ambulance, but Rennie wants Katie to stop worrying about her and instead focus on herself. Rennie is impressed at the way Katie is looking out for her. To calm her, she promises her that they'll be together, and she's not going anywhere till they both figure out who Lost Love is. At this point, Katie reveals that she knows who Lost Love is, but can't tell her because it's meant to be confidential. But Rennie believes she can also figure out who the Lost Love is without her help, especially if he's a member of their church. After service on Sunday, Rennie reveals to Katie that she knows who the person is, because she saw the way she looked at him during their choir rendition. Meredith once again runs to the dessert tower, like she usually does on Sundays, and her dad follows behind. Russ wants Katie to teach them how to make the cupcakes, since his daughter likes them a lot, so they fix a date. In the next scene, Cindy is helping Katie get her nails done. Katie claims she just felt like it was time to do her nails. Cindy thinks that Katie has a big plan that night, but doesn't want to tell her. So she offers to do her hair too, but Katie tells her she likes it simple. Later, Rennie looks at the dress Katie is putting on and politely tells her it doesn't fit her. Katie thinks it's best for the weather, and simple enough, since it's just the cupcake baking tutoring she's going for. Katie still wears the floral dress, even after all Rennie said to discourage her. When she pulls over at Russ's house, she stays in the car for some time before Meredith comes to meet her. She then drags her into the house, with Russ just watching and smiling. When they get in, Meredith compliments Katie, and Russ agrees. Meredith notices her nails too, but then Russ carries her away so they can allow Katie to settle in well. They all go to the kitchen to make the cupcakes. Russ and Meredith already spent last night picking out everything on the list Katie sent to them, but they weren't able to pick an apron. So Meredith tells Katie to pick one herself. Her mom made the aprons. Russ goes to get the mixer, and when he turns back, Katie is already in an apron, and from his countenance, it's like it's brought back memories of his wife in that apron. Before they begin, Katie tells them she needs a sous chef and an assistant, and Meredith volunteers to be the sous chef. With everyone assigned to roles, they start the process and it turns out to be fun. After baking the cakes, they all taste it and love it. With everything concluded, Katie sits outside the house with Russ. Russ offers to get her a jacket, because it seems cold, but Katie politely refuses. Russ thanks Katie for making time to come. He also apologizes to Katie on behalf of his daughter, if all the talk about her mum made her feel uncomfortable. 
Katie understands that it's not easy for both of them. Russ agrees that it's not easy, but he's trying his best to move on. After a brief silence between the two, Katie asks Russ if he's dating or going out with anyone yet, but Russ isn't, although he's trying to. Russ asks her the same question, and gets to know that she's trying to as well. Later, Katie is back home and meets Rennie, who is pretending to be sleeping. Katie wakes her up and gives her a very brief report on things that went on at the house. A typical Rennie asks if there were sparks between them. But Katie, knowing fully well what Rennie meant, insists on behaving naive and tells her their oven is in good condition. She informs Rennie that Russ didn't look at her like anything will ever go on between them. This makes Rennie assume that it's the dress. After attending to a man and woman, Clay comes to meet Russ reading the newspaper. He asks Russ what Viola has said again about lost love. Russ, knowing fully well that Clay isn't a fan of the column and does not even read it, asks him how he knows about it. It appears Russ made Clay curious because of the way he reads the paper. Russ opens the paper and starts to read Viola's letter to someone else, but Clay isn't interested and only wants to hear about lost love. But Viola didn't write this time. Russ thinks that lost love didn't write to her because he has found a girl. While they're standing quietly, a young beautiful lady comes over, and Clay calls Russ's attention so they go to help her out. Clay introduces himself and Russ, and the lady introduces herself as Jamie. Jamie seems physically attracted to Russ, and she holds his hand and asks about the tour that Clay mentioned to her earlier. At the office, Earl is happy with Katie, because since she's been writing, they've gotten more subscriptions. Earl too is curious about the whole lost love story, and wants to know why Viola hasn't written about lost love. However, Katie thinks she has been biased, replying to just lost love. Earl understands her point, but reminds her that everyone is caught up in the letter about lost love, and they are anticipating more. Earl believes that lost love may write that he has found true love, and she should make sure to print that particular letter if he ever writes it. Katie agrees and leaves the office. At Cindy's salon, Jamie walks in and sits down. Cindy recognizes she's a visitor, and wonders if she'll be staying a while. It appears Jamie may even stay permanently if she finds a good job, and Cindy advertises her salon to her. But Jamie doesn't want to go in that line, because she wants to change her line of work. She was once a nanny. As Jamie is a visitor and doesn't know places, she asks them for a place single ladies can go to meet guys. Katie is shocked at her question, and since she barely socializes, she doesn't know. So Cindy informs her that the best location is the rope loft. She even mentions Russ as the top guy in the gown. Jamie is quite thrilled that she's going on a date with the town's hottest guy, so she asks Katie about him. Katie is shocked at the revelation, and reveals to Jamie all she knows about Russ. She even mentions that he has an eight-year-old daughter. Jamie is determined to have a relationship with Russ, so she asks what Russ and his daughter like to do. Katie doesn't know much, but she does know that they like to cook. Cindy agrees, and adds that Russ won the town's BBQ last year. Katie goes to Russ's house, and he's surprised to see her. She apologizes for being too early, but Russ doesn't recall having an appointment with her. Katie informs him Meredith told her to come over at 7, and at once Russ realizes it's to babysit her while he's out. He was expecting Becky, their regular babysitter, and not Katie. Russ is not happy with his daughter for calling Katie to babysit her without his permission. Katie apologizes for not confirming with him before coming. However, Meredith called Katie because she thought her dad liked Katie. Russ agrees that he does like Katie, but he's sad he's going to miss a cooking lesson she'll probably give Meredith. So, he asks Meredith to save some of the food they'll cook for him. After giving his daughter a forehead kiss, he informs her that he's going out with a new friend, and then he leaves. Russ and Jamie are now at the restaurant. Jamie, already knowing earlier from the salon that Russ is a popular person, mentions that everyone at the restaurant knows his name. This makes Russ tell her that if he knew any other place, he would have taken her. They follow the waitress to a table for two, and while they walk past, people turn to look. Settled down at the table, Russ advises her that the seafood is nice. Even though Jamie already knows Russ has a daughter, and that he barbecues well, she still finds a way to make him mention it himself. Jamie wishes to meet his daughter, and Russ thinks it's a good idea, so he agrees. While Katie is busy putting the finishing touches, she hears laughter coming into the house, and it's Jamie and Russ. Unfortunately, Meredith is already sleeping, so Jamie doesn't get to meet her. Russ introduces Jamie to Katie instead, but gets to know that they already met each other at the salon. When Russ sees the chocolate cake that Katie made, he now wishes he kept space in his stomach for dessert, because he loves chocolate. Meanwhile, Jamie proceeds to the backyard to see his barbecue. Russ appreciates Katie for staying with Meredith. Katie meets Craig again at the bank, but this time, she starts the conversation. Craig finally summons the courage to invite her to have a drink with him. However, Katie believes they shouldn't, since they're both not interesting people. Although she thanks Craig for the invite. Next scene, it's Russ's house, and he calls Meredith down for lunch. Jamie is at the house too, and she finally meets Meredith. But Meredith doesn't seem to like Jamie. Even as Jamie tries to make a conversation with Meredith, she ignores her. This makes Jamie feel awkward. 
Russ and Jamie spend more time together. Meanwhile, Katie spends her time in the church's choir. Later, Jamie and Russ are sitting together in front of the house when Meredith informs her dad that she has something to show him. Since Meredith says it can't wait, he stands up and follows her inside the house. Russ, Meredith, and Jamie enter the church while the choir is ministering, and this attracts people's attention to them. They seem to be wondering about the new changes with him. After the service, Jamie stands up to leave, and Russ thanks her for coming to church with them. Katie sees Meredith sitting quietly and staring at Jamie and her dad, so she goes to meet her. Meredith is not feeling too good. Katie wonders if it's because there's a new person around her dad, but Meredith says she doesn't know, because as much as she wants her dad to be happy, Jamie is not very nice to her. Katie offers to help Meredith talk to her dad, but she prefers that she doesn't, and hopes things will get better. At home, Katie anxiously opens the letters to Viola and looks for lost love. In this letter, he asks for advice on if he should stop seeing the woman he's dating because his daughter doesn't like her. Katie picks up her laptop and starts writing angrily before she realizes it's not right. The fact that she likes Russ and isn't excited about him dating Jamie doesn't mean her reply to him should be biased. After some heaves, she calms down and starts to write a good reply. The next morning, the newspaper man brings the papers, and Cindy rushes out to get a copy. Clay comes over to visit Katie and Rennie. Clay's wife Alicia is in the hospital with her dad, so Rennie asks about his health and when Alicia will be back. Clay answers accurately because he keeps accurate time of even the minutes remaining for her to come back. Rennie wants to know if Clay may have an idea on what to do to get Katie hitched, and Clay suggests they find her a nice guy. Rennie suggests the bank manager, Craig. But Katie asks, what if she's found the right guy but he's taken? Clay knows it's Russ she's talking about. He invites her for 15 years of partnership celebration with Russ. Since his wife is out of town, he wants her to go as his date. Clay assures Katie that she can outclass Jamie, but Katie doesn't think so. The next morning while they're having tea, Rennie once again brings up the issue of Craig. She thinks it's better for Katie to at least try going out with Craig, since Russ is with Jamie now, but Katie isn't interested, and she doesn't even want to settle down. Rennie, not being married even at quite an elderly age, advises her it's good to have someone. This surprises Katie, who thought she liked being single and independent. Katie is late to work, and she is not her usual self. She reveals to Brian in the restroom that she is sad, because she likes a guy that doesn't like her, and surprisingly, Brian knows it's Russ. Katie wonders how he knew about it, but typical Brian knows. Katie reveals Clay's plan, and she still doesn't think she can outclass Jamie, but Brian encourages her. He offers to help Katie out with a makeover session. With the help of Rennie, Brian helps Katie pick a perfect dress for the date. After picking a dress, Brian takes her to Cindy to get her hair done. On the day of the date, the four of them head to meet Russ and Jamie. She questions why they're there, but Russ assures her it's a surprise. On their way to the reservation that Russ and Clay have made for them, Russ then tells Jamie the reason they're there. Jamie wishes Russ would have told her earlier that they were coming, so that she'd not have worn heels, and she would have dressed more casually. For Clay's plan with Katie to work, he compliments her so Russ can hear. Jamie, feeling quite jealous that Katie is with them, asks Clay if his wife knows he's bringing a date and Clay confidently lets her know that it was his wife's idea. Russ runs ahead of them and displays the banner that shows their 15th anniversary. Jamie expected probably a date just with her and Russ, and something more solemnly romantic, so this water dining doesn't impress her. Soon, Jamie starts to make excuses for being seasick, but Russ is surprised because she has never mentioned it. Katie innocently assures Jamie that the food and everything on the boat will be excellent, so she should just try it out. To make Katie jealous, Jamie mentions that the dock was the first place she met Russ. Later, they go in and are at the table. Katie finds it very easy to get the lobster meat out of the claws. Clay is impressed at how she manages to do it, and she reveals that lobster is her favorite, and she's already accustomed to it. When Jamie doesn't want to get her hands messy, Russ tells her that she can't enjoy his BBQ if she doesn't get her hands messy. Clay agrees with Russ and draws Jamie's attention to Katie who is not even bothered by getting messy. Russ turns to look at Katie, and his eyes say a lot to Jamie. After dinner, Clay and Katie spend time together. Clay didn't know Katie was cool, even though he has been seeing her around town. When he says there's something different about her, Katie admits to changing her hair, but that's not the kind of difference that Clay is talking about. He thinks Katie is more fun than usual. Clay doesn't want her to give up on giving Russ a shot. When Katie gets home, Rennie is surprised to see her home already. Katie discusses with Rennie how she feels about Russ. Although Jamie is gorgeous, Katie doesn't think she's meant for Russ. It's like Clay and Rennie want Katie to push her away, but she can't do that. She prefers that Russ sees her and wants her, and not the other way around. In the next scene, Russ is sitting down with a book and a cup of tea when his daughter walks in. While making the pancakes, Meredith gets to know that her dad was out with Jamie the previous night, and Katie was keeping Clay company. The little girl wants to know if Katie had a good time. Soon, Jamie comes to visit. She brings breakfast for them, but Meredith informs her they're already making pancakes. Jamie tells Meredith that pancakes will make her fat. Russ tries to explain to her that it has been their tradition to make pancakes on Sundays, and suggests Jamie should help out. 
but she refuses because she doesn't want to ruin her Sunday dress. Still, Russ hands Jamie an apron so she can help out, but she refuses again, saying that she doesn't want to be looking like an old housewife, and this makes Russ sad. Jamie plays romance with Russ, but Meredith immediately leaves. Upon seeing his daughter's reaction, Russ withdraws and doesn't look pleased. Everything he is going on with Jamie is putting a strain on the relationship with his daughter. When Russ is done with the pancakes, he calls Meredith, but she doesn't answer. Upon going up to her room to know why she didn't answer, he finds the room empty. Russ is bothered about where Meredith may be, but Jamie just sits down calmly, unbothered, while going through a magazine. Seeing that Russ isn't happy with her disposition, she suggests she go look for he. R but Russ wants her to stay behind in case she shows up. Russ can't find his daughter anywhere, so he alerts his friend Dave, who is a cop. Dave interrogates Russ, asking how Meredith's mental state was before she left, and Jamie immediately answers that she was fine. Probably because she knows Meredith may have left the house because of her. Clay is there too, and he advises Russ to take a break and he'll help him continue the search. Jamie isn't bothered like Russ is. She tries to pull him inside to at least eat, but Russ can't, knowing full well that his kid is missing. While Russ is still outside alone, Katie drives in, and is very bothered about what she heard. She tries to ask Russ some questions, and then in answering, he mentions Jamie's presence. Katie tries to let Russ know that Meredith doesn't like Jamie. Russ admits to being aware, but they have been working to make it work. Katie then offers to join Russ to look for her, and they run off immediately, so that they'll find her before it gets dark. While Katie and Russ are in the car trying to find Meredith, Katie notices Russ is not concentrating on the driving, so she tells him to pull over. The others have searched beaches, harbors, and schoolyards, but still no sign of Meredith. Having lost his wife, Russ is scared of losing Meredith too. Although he is glad Katie is with him, he isn't happy that Jamie is not out with him looking for Meredith. Suddenly, an idea strikes Katie, and she tells Russ to turn around. Katie and Russ are at the graveyard, because Katie thought that Meredith may want to talk to her mother, so they'd find her there. On seeing his wife's grave, Russ goes forward, and then he hears leaves Russell and Meredith comes out. Russ and his daughter embrace each other. Katie follows Russ and Meredith back to their house. After putting Meredith to sleep, Russ thanks Katie so much for her efforts, but she believes that's what friends are for. Before Katie leaves, she hands Russ the note she found while he was upstairs. Russ opens the note, and it's an annoying note from Jamie. She promises to search for Meredith with him the next day, because she has to get some sleep. She has made it clear that her beauty sleep is more important than his daughter's whereabouts. The next morning, Russ meets Katie on his way to drop a letter to Viola in the mailbox. He reveals that he writes to Viola, and she confesses that she knows he's lost love. Then he does something surprising. Russ gives Katie the letter to read it out loud. He realized that the woman he was with isn't right for him, and the woman he has been searching for is standing right in front of him. When Katie reads that part of the letter, Russ tells her she's the woman that he's been searching for. A nervous Katie doesn't think Russ is sure of what he's saying, but he assures her that he is. Katie then reveals that she is Viola. At this point, Russ is speechless and just laughs, while he's trying to find the right words to say. Russ draws her closer for a kiss, but Katie doesn't want them to kiss, because she's scared everyone will see. But Russ doesn't care, and they kiss. Just like Katie feared, their friends, family, and Katie's colleagues see them. They are very happy for her. Meredith, on seeing her dad and Katie, runs towards them, and they hug like one big happy family. 